Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Some time ago, I received a request to address the use of an antenna analyzer with an antenna tuner. Now, with most every transceiver sporting an internal automatic antenna tuner, I am assuming that we are talking about a manual antenna tuner of some sort. The power levels associated with the signal source with an antenna analyzer or VNA are most likely going to be way too low to allow an external automatic antenna tuner to get a lock on the right tuning spot. Now I have two totally manual antenna tuners to use with this demonstration, boat anchors if you will. The first is a Drake MN2000 antenna tuner designed for matching a coaxial feed line to a transceiver. The second is a Dentron RT3000 antenna tuner designed for matching a random length long wire antenna to a transceiver. The two antenna tuners we will be looking at here are representative of the basic stuff you'll find out there. So the procedure is probably going to be similar for your particular manual antenna tuner. With the advent of inexpensive VNAs like the Nano VNA and all of their cousins, I want to demonstrate the procedure not just with my MFJ259C antenna analyzer, but also with a VNA so we can see what it might look like when you use one of these devices. But first, some important cautions. If there is the possibility of thunder or lightning storms in your area, postpone this process, disconnect all antennas and ground all of your antennas. Failure to do so could prove to be fatal should lightning strike any active antennas that may exist. Second of all, before you connect your antenna analyzer or VNA to any antenna or antenna system, be sure to completely short out the antenna or antenna system to ground to ensure that all static has been dissipated. Failure to do this could cause the front end of your analyzer or VNA to get damaged due to static discharge from the antenna or the antenna system. Lastly, when the tuning procedure is complete, completely disconnect your antenna analyzer or VNA from the antenna tuner. Bleed through power while transmitting even to an inactive or disabled port may be sufficient to damage the front end of your analyzer or VNA. Now, the first step in this whole process is to procure a copy of the manual for your particular antenna tuner if you can find one. You might find it convenient to turn off automatic power saving mode with the MFJ259C so that it doesn't go to sleep while you're tuning your antenna. To do this, press and hold the mode button while turning on the antenna analyzer. When the copyright message appears on the display, release the mode button. The analyzer will now tell you that power saving mode is off and it will not go to sleep. But be careful, remember it will remain on forever or until the batteries die, whichever comes first. So don't forget to shut it off when you are done. All right, so now let's dive into the Drake MN2000 coax to coax antenna tuner. To begin with, we need to talk about procedure. What is the process we go through to use our antenna analyzer or VNA to match an antenna or antenna system to our radio using the Drake MN2000 matching network? First of all, we need to set the controls of the MN2000 to the initial settings. This means the reactive tuning needs to be set to 5, Resistive tuning to 5, set the band switch to the desired band, and the input switch to the desired match position. Then we need to set up our measurement instrument. If you're using an antenna analyzer, set it to the desired frequency. If you're using a VNA, set the frequency limits to include the target frequency and calibrate the VNA at the end of the cable that you're going to use to connect to the antenna tuner. Now before you do anything else at this point, you want to short the antenna or antenna system to ground 
to discharge any static buildup that may exist. This is to prevent a static discharge from damaging the front end of your analyzer or VNA. Now remove the short and connect the antenna or antenna system to the antenna tuner's antenna connection. Next, connect the antenna analyzer or VNA to the antenna tuner. Now we get to talk about the process of tuning the MN2000. The first step is to adjust the resistive tuning for a minimum SWR. Note this value. Then turn the reactive tuning control a small amount clockwise and go back and readjust the resistive tuning for a minimum SWR. Is the new SWR higher or lower than the SWR noted above? If the new SWR is higher, turn the reactive tuning control to a small amount counterclockwise of the center position and then readjust the resistive tuning for a minimum SWR. If the new SWR is lower, continue the process adjusting the reactive tuning control in the clockwise direction. Work back and forth between the resistive tuning and reactive tuning controls until the desired SWR is reached. Completely disconnect the antenna analyzer or VNA from the antenna tuner and don't forget to shut it off. Connect your radio to the antenna tuner. You are now good to go. Now that we know the procedure, I'm going to go through the process first with my MFJ259C antenna analyzer. For those who might have a nano VNA or one of its cousins, or a mini VNA tiny or other VNA, I'm going to repeat the procedure with my VNA. Now let's move on to the Dentron RT3000 coaxed long wire antenna tuner. This one is a bit more of a challenge. The instructions call for you to listen to your radio and make the initial adjustments to maximize the amount of background noise that you hear. There's no band switch. You have two variable capacitors, which are the transmitter and the antenna matching, and a roller inductor all fashioned into a Pi network. Well, what am I doing when I adjust for the maximum background noise? I am doing the initial adjustment to minimize the SWR at the radio connector before actually transmitting any power to the antenna. So let's step through the tuning procedure. First of all, we need to set the controls of the RT3000 to their initial settings. Transmitter matching needs to be set to 50. 
antenna matching to 50, inductance to 0, 0, 0.0. That's my preference. So I start at one end of the uh, roller inductor. And then the function switch needs to be set to operate. Next, we have to set up our measurement instrument. Now, if you're using an antenna analyzer, set it to the desired frequency. If you're using a VNA, set the frequency limits to include the target frequency and calibrate the VNA at the end of the cable that you're going to use to connect to the antenna tuner. Before you do anything else now, short the antenna or antenna system to ground to discharge any static buildup that may exist. This is to prevent a static discharge from damaging the front end of your analyzer or VNA. Remove the short and connect the antenna or antenna system to the antenna tuner's antenna connection. Next, connect the antenna analyzer or VNA to the antenna tuner. Now we get to talk about the process of tuning the RT3000. The first step is to adjust the inductance control for a minimum SWR. Now adjust the transmitter matching and antenna matching for a minimum SWR. Go back to the inductance and adjust it to a minimum SWR. Work back and forth between the transmitter matching, antenna matching, and inductance controls until the desired SWR is reached. Once you are done, completely disconnect the antenna analyzer or VNA from the antenna tuner and don't forget to turn it off. Connect your radio to the antenna tuner. And now you are good to go. Now that we know the procedure, I'm going to go through the process first with my MFJ259C antenna analyzer. For those who might have a Nano VNA or one of its cousins, or a Mini VNA Tiny or other VNA, I'm going to repeat the procedure with my VNA. So there you have it, using your antenna analyzer or VNA to tune your manual antenna tuner to a target frequency. If you found this video helpful, please click on like and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Toodaloots.